Alright, I'm in a kimono shop here in Tokyo at the moment and we're about to um, film the intro to my Cinematic Japan video. This is going to be the start of a behind the scenes thing of how we filmed it. And right now we just had a stressful time picking the kimono. The first shop we went to had yakata and yeah, we want a kimono even though it's out of season um, because I don't know, I just, I just like the kimonos better. So we had to pick from all these colours and a lot of them are like kind of touristy looking. Um, so I think I found a white one which has like flowers. So now I'm just waiting um, for our model to get changed in the kimono and we'll see what it looks like. I'm hoping the colour I picked, we went for a pink which is pretty bold. Um, but I went for a light colour because we're going to be try filming most of this at night. And I'm hoping the white colour stands out in contrast with the black of the night. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Unveiling of the... <laughs> Come on simple. 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 Yeah, it's simple. Or, or, or you can twist it. Oh, there's two ways you can do it. Which? Which? Again, can I say simple? Again? Simple? Yeah. <laughs> wow, there are so many little things you have to choose to match up. It's just so hard. I didn't think it would be this difficult. Accessories. Oh, I have to choose accessories as well. Damn, but it looks good. I really like it. Really simple. Yeah, give us the wings. <laughs> so once the kimono was sorted, we still needed one more key element for the outfit. And that was a traditional umbrella. Whoa! We soon found out how hard it was to track one down, with shops either not hiring them or selling them for 200 to $300. All right, so we spent the last hour walking around the streets looking for a traditional umbrella like this one. But we wanted a plain red one without the flowers and stuff. We couldn't find one anywhere. All the ones that we did find were very, very expensive. I didn't realize how hard it was to find a traditional umbrella. But we got this one here, which is, what's it called? A banga? Bangasa. Yeah, and we have my savior here. Hello. Hello. Which was like one of the only shops that was open late who had one. So thank you so much. And if you're looking for kimonos or bangasas um, in Tokyo, in the Asakusa area, I'll put her shop in the uh, description Aomi. below. Yeah. Aomi. Aomi. That's the name. Aomi Kimono. So, so yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Me too. Appreciate thank it. Thank you coming for this shop. Yeah. Very happy to no. see you. <laughs> She's so funny. She's the greatest. So we're gonna go get something to eat now, and then we're gonna wait until it gets a bit darker, less people, and do some filming. So. Wow. So that was a lot harder than I thought it would be to get a traditional umbrella. Um, the first kimono place only had the. Um, what colour did they have the first one? They didn't have red, they had purple, but it was like a... It just didn't... It just need the red. It's just authentic Japanese is the red, so... Luckily we found that place. Um, oh. Alright, this behind this behind the scenes getting a bit complicated, but yeah. Stay tuned. One, go. One more. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay, it's about uh, 10 p.m. now. I've been filming a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, there's still a lot of people here, which is annoying because it's a public holiday. We were hoping it was going to be emptier, so I've just been using 55mm so far and getting all the shots that I can get, such as um, her walking up the steps and putting money in and close up to the hand and stuff. As you can see, there's still heaps of people here, so we're doing our best to cut them out. But yeah, how are you feeling? Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a strong communication barrier between us, but it's really fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> こう見たことがありますか。
walk. Walk? Oh. Yeah, so three, two, one, walk. We just performed one of the, oh my god, we, we waited four hours for one shot. We had to wait for no one to be at the temple, so she could be praying. Um, and then I could do a hyper zoom all the way back. And I had to walk backwards because that's the way I wanted to do it. Holy shit. I ran into some people at the end and they were not happy. But we did it. Yeah? Yeah, we did yeah. it. I gotta check my shot list now because it's 11 o'clock at night and um, you have the last train home to catch very soon, so we're gonna get some quick, uh, very quick other shots and then I'm pretty sure we're done. Hopefully. Alright, so we we're taking the last shots that we wanted and it started raining heaps. And this umbrella's a bit paper, so oh no. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh no, we broke it. Oh f we put a hole in it. Okay, it got really wet and we put a hole in it. Well. Well, oh no, the, get, the lady lent it to us this for free in good faith and we just put a hole in it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this is not what the vlog was about. I was going to say, so we filmed these three, there's a couple of bits that I wanted to film. Her putting the thing in her hair, her putting her shoes on and stuff. This is one of the places we filmed it. Literally at the front of a random street because it was raining. I'll show you the other place. It's at the front of the train station, it's really funny. So when she grabs the umbrella, I filmed it just here at the Ginza Line train station and then I filmed her putting the thing in her hair because I really like this background and I had the 55 on so I literally just did it in front of this background so it looked like it was in like a house or something. Really funny and really rushed last minute stuff. But um, now that's it and we're gonna say goodbye because it's 11.30 and she's about to miss her last train home. So. All right, so we've come up to the rooftop of my hostel right now to try to get some uh, a more quieter spot Downstairs there's too much traffic noise or people walking past and talking. So here we just get the city ambience which won't really matter with the dialogue because um, we want that anyway and then when I put music and sound effects over it you won't really notice the ambience, it'll just blend in the background. So as long as the dialogue's nice and clean then it should be fine. Alright so we're out the front again because the roof had too much reverb. Heaps of people around. We're gonna try shield out the noise with these umbrellas. <laughs> we'll see how it goes but um, one more try. All right, she's gonna catch catch the train. <laughs> so we're quickly running in the alleyway. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, get some quiet. Two, one, go. ここを見たことはありますか？私が見た景色を見たことがありますか？これは秘密であり、私たちの秘密でもある。Cool. Oh, thank Not, you. Yes, thank you so much. We're done. Okay, so let's get you to your uh, rap concert. Okay. This is what happens behind the scenes when serious work is happening. This is our official translator. Thank you. Check out his work in the credits. I just we just met, but check out his work in the credits. <laughs> Did make some dope videos. Check out his work. I mean, you make dope videos too. You all make dope videos. Just check out their work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I hope that gave you some insight into my creative progress, uh, my creative pro process. <laughs> I hope that gave you some insight into my creative process and how I go about filming, or how I went about filming the intro for this. And this was a super fun project to shoot and put together. Arena is amazing and please check out and support her on socials. I'll put them down in the bio. So basically, originally the plan was me and Ben would fly to Japan, explore Japan for three weeks, film everything we could and collate it into a nice cinematic video, which is what we did. On the second or third last day in Tokyo, we had a little filmmakers meetup where I met 
a girl named Rena. I later messaged her on Instagram to see if she'd have a kimono because I had this cool idea. Not really a cool idea. I, the whole time I was in Japan, I really wanted to shoot someone with a kimono just walking through the streets and have that freedom to set up some scenes and stuff. Um, and she said, yeah, I have a kimono. And I got really excited that night in my hostel. I was up till about 4 a.m. Uh, writing in this book right here, uh, a full story based around uh, Rena. Uh, I keep saying ah and um, and it really annoys me. Yeah, the next day, we, the next night, we spent about six hours shooting around Sonoji, Sonoji Shrine? Sonoji Temple in Tokyo. So outside of shooting the intro, most of the other shots in Japan were literally run and gun. We kind of went to all these destinations, really winged it, got a lot of good shots because we spent a lot of time waiting for things to happen as as you do, as you have to do. So when I was in my hostel So when I was in my hostel coming up with this idea and concept, my biggest inspiration for from it was actually a musician called Porter Robinson and his song Follow Feeling and before the drop it says now I hear what I hear and the whole concept I wanted her to say now see what I see and really try represent the local perspective of Japan. Kind of a, a way to express my anger at tourism at the time because I feel like tourism is a lot of go to a place see the basic places but don't actually intermingle into the culture and try actually learn what makes that culture um, and this was a way of me trying to express that there's more little details in everything you do that uh, you will miss if you're not really searching for it. So that was kind of the whole basis of the concept and if you listen to the dialogue and actually analyze it, you can see that come through in every word she says. And thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for some more videos um, I'm going to do. I'm going to put together a Japan vlog series. So what happened day to day while we're over there filming and some of the destinations and if you want to visit Japan, how you can do it, just look out for some vlogs. Um, and yeah, see you in the next video.